we know to be facts. Yeah. I I just don't understand how you could be around this situation and not say anything. Right. Like these people, I, I guess it's like, you know, it's not my business, not my problem. And I also think I that guess. Um, there's probably people that did say something and Dee Dee was so overbearing and say, you know what? You're not around her like I am. You don't know what she has. She And she was a master manipulator. Yeah, she was a master. Like, if if you live over there and I live right here and I see you every once in a while, how dare I think I know what goes on in your house better than you do? Yeah, I guess. I guess mother knows best is the problem. But um, but uh, as far as Gypsy goes, she was a. I I don't blame her. She was a child. She this was normal to her. This is all she knew. Yeah. Well, she also said that she knew she wasn't sick. Yeah, she knew she wasn't sick, sick, but she also knew the consequences of telling everybody that she wasn't sick. And yeah, and you got to think like as a child, like the most important person to you is your parents, and you want to keep them happy, and you don't want to be in trouble. And like the punishments that she would get were so severe, like you would do anything to not have to go through that. Right. If you if you're willing to go so far as to keep your daughter doped up when she doesn't need to be, imagine going off. When when you get really mad, right. yeah. I mean, I, I I imagine I can only imagine the shit you would like be feeling and having to go through, and like the kind of effect it would have on you. Plus, I'm I'm sure she was manipulating her as to, hey, you know, all this shit that we're getting the, uh, you know. The the house, the... The house, the, the Disneyland trips, and I mean, most of that came later, but I'm sure the community was helping out at the time, and certainly, um, she was probably, um, I don't know what you call it, I mean, down here we have what they call welfare or whatever, and they help people like that. I'm sure it was something like that up, up in Missouri, I mean, uh, not Missouri, Missouri's later what they It was Habitat through. for what Humanity. Well, that was later. That was after yeah. the hurricane. That was after they left uh, Louisiana yeah, and yeah. went to Missouri. But I'm sure she was on some type of assistant programming. Oh, yeah, I'm um, sure. Probably getting paid by the state to take care yeah, of Yeah, getting paid by the state. Take, you know, she probably said, you know, if, if you come out and say anything, I won't be getting this income and you won't be getting those Disney movies or whatever, you know. Yeah, manipulating her into not saying anything that way, you know. <laughs> If you come out and you say this, you know, we'll lose everything. Right. And yeah. Like, Gypsy wasn't even in school. She pulled her out in second grade and homeschooled yeah. her because of her illnesses. Yeah. Right. And then we get to the point where, you know, the Hurricane Katrina happened mm-hmm. in Louisiana. And that's when they moved to Missouri. And that's when, you know, like you said, the community got together with Habitat for Humanity and they... Uh, built this house and they built a wheelchair ramp and they gave it to them and everything. And it was a big deal locally. Yeah. Um, you know, and they totally took advantage of that and, you know, make a wish foundations, getting trips to, you know, Disneyland and stuff like that. Right. She was yeah. taking advantage. She was going extremely far. You know, and and we see that today. You know, with the well, we live in a Commonwealth state where the welfare system is very, very common here, and we know that there's people that take advantage of the welfare system. Um, they'll have, you know, they'll have more kids just to stay on it. Mm-hmm. So she took it even more further and took uh, not only advantage of the state help, but all these independent local charity helps that, you know, thought that they were helping out a sick child. So that, that takes even more, you know, malice to pull that off. Right. Yeah. Somehow her mom was just so manipulating and very, uh, silver tongued, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. And, and the hurricane helped her out too, because, if anybody questioned what Gypsy had, she can say, oh, well, all of my documents were ruined in, in the hurricane. Yeah. Right. You know, um, 
It was like the perfect storm for yeah. her bullshit. It's like every everything that happened, she was like, I don't know if she was, uh, you, to be very sick, she was very fucking smart. Mm-hmm. As as far as taking a, a advantage and basically building an entire life off of charity, I, I psycho like to me is psychotic. Well, yeah, it's psychotic, but you know, to it, it's, it, like it's a, one thing. Or master manipulator. It's one thing to be a psycho and try to do it, and then maybe it's she's a, not psycho. Maybe she's just a fucking like master manipulator. Well, that's what I'm saying. It's it's one thing to be a psycho and try to do something and. But it's another to, like, fool every person you come in contact with. Right. Like, you're thinking to yourself, this is America. How can somebody be um, diagnosed or self-diagnosed right. without medical people backing it up? And, and I'll oh, go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, I think what sucks, too, is, like, it's easy to think, like... Um, how did the doctors not catch on to this? Right. But right. there, there was a doctor who came out and said he saw it. He, he recognized it for what it was. But the problem was if he went, if he was to try to fight her on that, she had everybody so convinced that gypsy had all of these things that he would have to try to convince all of those people that they're believing a lie. Right. So it's one man against the world. Yeah. And it's one of those things where, you could either jeopardize your career and get scolded for it, or you can just be like, well, it's just one case. Which which is fucked. It's fucked. It's a fucked decision. The, I guess, it, to me, it shows how broken the medical system is. Yes. It, you can pretty much lie about anything, and they're like, oh, okay, well, I guess you got this, and here's... Yep. Here's a medication, and you're now officially diagnosed with X, Y, and Z, and right. we're going to treat this. There's so many people in this country that are, I mean, they can get a prescription for pills easy as anybody, you know. It's it's almost like the people that need the prescriptions that actually have pain, they they can't get it. And they end up having to like buy them illegally from somebody who has them, yeah. but that doesn't need them. Yeah. And um, it seems to be a pattern here. It 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 does it doesn't seem to be like, you know, a coincidence anymore. It seems to be a pattern that a lot of people, um, are diagnosed with something, and it's it's almost like they want to keep you on something. Yeah. It, it's definitely well. If they if they keep you on something, that means they keep making money. Off yeah, of they, you. they always you know, if you're on Medicare or Medicaid or whatever, uh, pretty much your insurance is paying. So the doctor or the pharmacy or whatever is going to continue to get paid. Oh God, yeah, they'll, they'll so, get you in yesterday. Yeah, if I cure you of your disease, I'll, n there's no income coming in for me anymore so i mean and, yeah. and that's what bothers me like you know a piece of shit that gets pills like crazy yeah yeah um well you know of him now you you don't associate with him but the reason why i'm saying that is because he they give him like all these pain medication and i had fucking open heart surgery and i had to fight to get pain prescription because my chest was fucking cracked open right yeah yeah and, and, and like I had to jump through fucking hoops and I was like, I was fucking dying or yeah. felt like it. And when you think about that type of stuff, man, fucking it, infuriates it's, me. It's, 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 yeah, it's very infuriating. And so now we ask the question, how can all these doctors and medical people let this go without being checked? And, but now that we think about it, it, it's not too shocking, to be honest with you. Yeah, pretty much. It's like, uh, this person's crazy. I just don't want to deal with this person. Yeah. You know, type situation. Um, so, I mean, that's a little bit of, like, what she had to go through. Yeah. Um, and I guess moving forward into her teenage years, um, I think, like, the next part was that she... So, she got the computer. And she started, that was pretty much the beginning of the end right there. Yeah. Yeah, so she got a computer, and her mom thought that she was, you know, using it to look at 
Disney websites and little Barbie doll, whatever, um, just like little girl things. Cause she, she had this just infatuation with keeping her child young forever. Um, but in reality, when she would go to sleep, Gypsy would use it to get online and she created Facebook and started talking to people and she met, um, this man. I don't remember what his name was. The first guy. I don't either. I don't remember. I don't recall a name. I just know that he was like 36 years old. Yes. And at Christian Mingle. No, nope, that was the, that was the next one. That was the next. Oh, uh, well, yeah. <laughs> myself. That's yeah. A, that's this, okay. This I, guy thought that she was 15 years old, a, a disabled 15 year old, and he wanted to take her away. So he was a sick fuck. Right. Yes, a hundred percent. Oh, is this the one that she met at the convention? Yeah, this is the one that she met at the convention and and um they started talking and he was thirty six years old and she he, she he thought that she was what she was portrayed as a fifteen year old handicapped girl. Right. And he and she started to open up to him about what her mother was doing to her. And he was like, I want to take you away and this and that, blah, blah, blah. He still thinks that she's 15 disabled. Right. Then as they go on talking, Gypsy founds, finds out her real age. Mm -hmm. And at the time, I think she was either 18 or 19 when she yeah. found this out. And she told the guy and the guy was still wanted to do it. But the fact is he wanted to do it when he still knew that she was 15, right. which makes him a sick fucking individual. So if you're yeah. listening to this. Fuck you, dude. Right. So they come up with a plan, and she runs away um, and goes to his house. And they come to find out the guy's on fucking parole and can't even leave the state. Yeah, yeah. Um, she Did they say what he was on parole for? Probably a pedophile. I don't Probably. know. Allegedly. I don't want to get sued. Fuck you, dude, though. But <laughs> he, she, she took a bus not to his house but to a friend's house, and he was going to meet her there. Right. And I I don't think in the documentary they got far as to say, did he show up? Did, did whatever happen? That, like, she says that she goes to the friend's house and... Her the, mom catches the, up. Yeah, the mm -hmm. next part is just, oh, my mom found out. So I don't yeah. know if he showed up or if they got halfway out. Uh, I guess the reason why she had to go to the friend's house is because... Dude couldn't leave the state from his house. Right. And I guess the friend's house was kind of like, you know, in the middle, I guess. Right. But they never say if if they actually met up. I think the, the, the mom um, found him, I guess. It was within a few hours that she yeah, found him. Yeah, within a few hours, which means, you know, sh somebody was in the know to give her that information or maybe she left – the computer open or something. I don't know. Yeah, It doesn't say uh, like when I, I tried to look into that a little bit more and it just said with the help of police, she found her within a few hours. Yeah. So well, probably you know, got in her computer and you know, if, if the mom, you know, did have the dude's name, they probably looked it up and saw he was convicted of something and it was pretty easy to find him. Yeah, probably. Yeah. But, but you know, that was just, you know, that's, that shows a lot of things right there a that gypsy was so desperate to get out and b sh her judgment is still fucked right majorly yeah her judgment is still fucked that she would go from uh probably a monster to another monster yeah i um, mean she would have still been abused but in a different way right yeah uh, so after that is the Christian mingle, right? Well, I just wanted to point out the punishment that she got for that. Oh yeah. Mother. yeah, That's right. Her mom. Yeah. So she caught she, her. Her mom caught her, brought her home and she, you know, Gypsy says she chained her to the bed for two weeks. Wasn't allowed to move. Wasn't allowed to get up to use the bathroom or anything. Okay. About that. I watched the clip and she, she said that, that she was chained to the bed and she couldn't get up. Mm -hmm. But then she said she had to use the bathroom in the bucket and on herself. It's very conflicting. Well, you got to the 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 chain to the bed part is not clarified. You so when you say chain to the bed, most people might think you know arms, legs spread out like that. Right. It might, but it could be, like be just a shackled chain. shackled yeah. foot to the to the bed pole. Right. And it could be a bucket beside it or whatever. Either way, 
Um, I think it was just designed for her not to leave that room or jump out the window or anything like that. 